Hello, welcome to another video. Uh, in this one, we're gonna talk about my advent of code project template and how I set stuff up and also some of the utilities are there. This will just give you a frame of reference for all of the rest of the advent of code stuff that I'm gonna do. So let's jump into that. Okay, so I am going to clone my Git repository. I have everything version controls. Uh, GitHub.com, uh, Anthony writes code slash AOC 2020. Um, I've numbered these based on the year. I also have ones for 2018, 2019. If we CD into this folder, uh, you'll notice we're part way through 2020, so I haven't filled out everything yet. Um, but I have this day zero zero, and I'm gonna show you the template in there. I have a requirements.txt that's gonna install the tools that I need to work on these problems. And I have this support folder. This is where I've added a few little extra goodies to make this a little bit easier to work with. Uh, once you've cloned my repository, you can set up the virtual environment. You do that doing virtual MVM. Um, I have a tool called Activator Setup, so you can see it's prompting me as to whether I want to automatically activate this virtual environment. I'm going to say uh, yes, and you'll see that it has automatically activated this. Now, to install these requirements.txt, I'm going to do pip install dash r requirements.txt. This is going to install two things. One is that little support library that I talked about, and the other is PyTest. PyTest is going to help me validate my solutions before I try and submit them. And um, you'll see inside support, if we look at support, uh, there is you know a setup.py and a setup.cfg in here. That's how I provide a separate Python package with these helpers in it. And support.py contains two things. One is a timing context manager. This is just a very rough estimate to show like how fast things are running. It's not scientific in any sort of way. If you want to do actual profiling, I was just looking into a profiling tool. And the other thing that it provides is this download input function. Uh, this is actually used by a command line tool, which I'll show you in a second, uh, which downloads the puzzle input so you don't have to navigate on the web. It does this by you know, sending an authenticated request to Advent of Code uh, using a cookie. So you'll have to download your cookie. I'll show you how to do that in a second as well. Um, so if you go to day zero, zero, this is kind of the template that I copy to each of the days. So let's say I was about to start on day six. I would do cp r day zero, zero to day zero, six. Note that I've zero pounded the numbers here. This is important so that GitHub sorts these folders properly. If we CD into day 06, uh, you'll see that I have a couple of files here. One of them is input.txt, which if you count input.txt, it starts blank. Uh, this is something that will be filled in by your puzzle input. If we look at part one.py, you'll see a bunch of stuff is set up here. I'll go over each part of it. Um, basically, I have a command line tool. This is what I'm going to use when I want to actually run my solution. And it takes a single input, which is the data file, and that data file defaults to the input.txt that is next to this Python file. Uh, that way, if I just do python part1.py, it will just run this for me. Uh, inside my main function, I've set up a thing which opens the data file, uh, starts the context manager for timing, and then prints the result of the compute function with the contents of that file. I basically use this pattern in every single one of my solutions where the input is fed directly into our compute function. Now, in my compute function, I've set a little bit of, uh, you know, starter code here. Almost always, this the first part of implementing one of these problems is looping over some split part of the input. So I put s.split here. Sometimes this turns into split line. Sometimes this is s.split on a comma. Sometimes this is s.split on new line, new line. Uh, this can vary a lot based on how the problems are. But this saves a little bit of typing when I'm trying to go fast. And then finally, there's this test function here, uh, and I use this to validate the uh, sample inputs that are often given with problems. So sometimes the problems will have a short input, and I will, you know, go in here and make like input s equals you know, the, the short input here. So say it was like a bunch of numbers or whatever. I would copy and paste this, of course, and then in my test case here, I would just put input s and the expected value. So let's say it was supposed to be 42. That way, when I am in um, when I'm in that directory, so let's say we went to day six, I can immediately start running pytest part one dot pi, and it will validate my test case for me. So I can use this to iteratively work and work out the correct solution. So you can see, you know, it didn't work here because it expected the value forty two, and I got zero. 
Uh, as I implement the problem, I fill these out here, and then finally when I'm done, I will run run the Python script. And so you can do that by doing part Python part one .py, and it'll print out some you know timing here. <laughs> it's kind of funny that a completely empty file takes you know 31 microseconds to run, but yeah, you know, it's Python, so it's kind of slow. So that, that's why that happens. But anyway, this is the template that I use, and um, this is the the basics of how I go to solve advent of code. Uh, hopefully this was useful for you. Uh, there will be follow-up videos to this, which will have, you know, solutions to individual days. So check out those. Uh, and there should be a playlist in the description if I don't forget it. But anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.